the standard mode of hemodialysis delivery of four-hour treatment sessions thrice weekly exposes patients to highly unphysiological conditions despite being a life-sustaining necessity. Hemodialysis-induced fluid volume fluctuations occur in the patients within the short four-hour dialytic periods, as well as in the extended interdialytic phases of about 44 to 68 hours. The cyclic processes of intermittent hemodialysis regimes, therefore, bring additional difficulties in the management of end-stage kidney disease patients, related to repeated fluid accumulation and fluid depletion disorders. Mechanalistically, there are two separate hemodynamic stress states, one being an acute interdialytic stress phase reflecting intravascular fluid depletion induced by HD ultrafiltration, a prolonged chronic interdialytic period of extracellular fluid accumulation follows and leads to fluid overload, which is additionally worsened by potentially loading patients with the prescribed dialysate sodium during the HD session. The fluid volume vicious circle in CKD patients is the main driver of dialysis-induced systemic stress that leads to multi-organ damage due to cardiovascular impairment and reduced tissue perfusion of vascular beds, resulting in long-term structural and functional damage of vital organs. Changes of plasma sodium concentrations during hemodialysis are decisive for fluid volume and hemodynamic disturbances. During HD, a predefined plasma water amount is removed by ultrafiltration. Sodium balance is normally defined as the difference between the amount of dietary uptake and the overall sodium loss by a urine or dialysis, feces and skin. Hence, a positive sodium balance indicates that total body sodium has increased and vice versa. In hemodialysis, sodium mass removal impacts the total body's sodium balance because of the sodium concentration gradient between the dialysis fluid and plasma. Other variables also determine the extent of sodium removal, the treatment modality and the treatment conditions selected per session such as the dialysis fluid sodium concentration all impact the resulting fluid overload of the patient. Together, these dynamic treatment variables, and in particular the dialysate sodium concentration, impact the diffusive sodium transport. An underlying cause of volume overload is the diet-related increase in plasma sodium concentration in the interdialytic period between the HD sessions. Dietary salt and fluid restriction is the cornerstone of fluid and sodium management. However, adherence to a salt-restricted diet that would reduce the interdialytic weight gain and therefore facilitate the achievement of dry weight is often poor. Controlling excess salt and fluid intake during the interdialytic phase requires the patient's discipline, education and continuous counselling by dietitians. Dietary restriction remains challenging in dialysis patients. Current best clinical practices recommend the restriction of daily salt intake, minus 4 grams daily. This target is rarely achieved and cumbersome. It substantially alters the patient's quality of life. Sodium, fluid and hemodynamic management in hemodialysis patients necessitates a multifactorial strategy and personalized approach. Beyond dietary education and counselling, this includes a dialysis prescription whereby fluid and sodium removal address different treatment variables such as increasing treatment time to reduce ultrafiltration rates or to individually adjust dialysate sodium prescriptions for each patient. In the next episode, the potential of personalising sodium and hemodialysis will be addressed.